Okay, good morning, Cami and Rosemary, and welcome to the lab session for writing, writing Wikipedia articles. Um, looks like we've got a small group, at least to start out with today. I know Sarah is going to be with us, but she's going to be joining us a little late today. Um, and I guess, as, as always, I'm interested in what you've been working on or thinking about. Um, I don't have any specific, uh, any, anything specific I was going to open with, so I'm hoping that you have some ideas or questions to start us off with. Uh, good morning. This is Rosemary. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're a little bit quiet, but I can, uh, but well, not so much that I can hear. Well, checking in on things you've seen. I haven't really done anything since we talked last, and I've been, I've communicated with Trish some about things on the email, um, and obviously for myself, I'm realizing it has nothing to do with the course or your presentation. I've learned a great deal, but I have been working on some other policy papers that have, that's just have taken up all my time. So I, I've come to the lab session primarily to hear what people are working on. But I did want to say, this is by way of comment, is that just participating in these courses the twice I've tried now um, has really given me a, a much greater respect for the work that goes into Wikipedia. I've always had my students be critical consumers of it uh, and think of it as an encyclopedia rather than a primary source, which is appropriate. But um, I just uh, I just wanted to share that. It's been really a, a wonderful confirmation of the value of this common enterprise. So I'm, I really don't have any specific things today. I just uh, wanted to let you know that. Okay, well, I appreciate that. That's uh, it's good to hear. It's um, you know, of course, we want to help people get to a point where they're, you know, actively contributing. But um, but any anything that helps people better understand Wikipedia and how it fits together is is definitely a, a great outcome from our perspective. So I'm I'm very glad to hear that. And also the uh, Wikimedia project that for educators, I've I've communicated with those folks, and and um, I'll probably if you do this again, I'm not sure how soon you will, but I'll probably weigh in again and try to really get some um, some things up on Wikipedia. But I, I would really like to get to a point where I can have my students participate and, and explore how they could be producers of, of knowledge this way. I, I really liked what uh, the, the person from um, Italy, I've forgotten her name now, but on Tuesday we talked about looking at the museum um, pictures, the, the, all of the, the big store of images uh, that are from different cultures. And since I work with sociology and anthropology, there are a lot of students who, I think especially our anthropology students, who would really find that a fascinating opportunity. So I do want to learn it, and I, I will learn it. It just uh, hasn't worked yet for me. So Sure. <laughs> and can you remind me what you teach um, what, and, and what level? I teach sociology, so it's large. I teach courses in inequality and diversity and family and and religion and education, all of the institutions, uh, and then general theoretical courses and research methods as well at the undergraduate level. Okay. Um, and I'm in a small department that has two, uh, three anthropologists and two sociologists, so we all share the same students. But some of them have a focus, and some of the answer students are are really looking at doing museum work. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, something that might be might be fun to look at. Um, this is actually something that I was just working on a bit last night. Um, I uh, a, a friend of mine. So this is someone I know through uh, through my work on. Wikipedia, and actually he's more active on Wikimedia Commons, um, he pointed out a couple of Flickr photo streams that are freely licensed or public domain. So one of the things that he likes to do is just is upload large sets of freely licensed materials. And he knows that I'm from Oregon, so he pointed out that he found a couple of interesting ones from Oregon. And I was just going through and, um, and categorizing them. 
So uh, it might be interesting to kind of look at what that process looks like. Um, this isn't directly working on Wikipedia, but it's it's work that really could support. As you'll see, um, there are a ton of photos in in here that could be used to improve Wikipedia articles, and just getting them sorted and categorized uh, is a good step towards making them findable by the people who might want to put them in articles. So I mean, do you think that would be interesting to look Wikimedia at the Wikimedia Commons? That's right, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. So I'm just, uh, let's see, I'm going to log into my regular account. I don't know, better turn on the screen sharing, do I? Okay, so I'm going to just find the category by looking at the history of my contributions. Um, so there's, I was you know, just need to look through here a little bit to find. Okay, so this is one of the streams. So these are <coughs> these are files that are from the Bureau of Land Ma Management, which is a federal agency in the United States. Uh, if we have anyone, uh, you know, looking at this archive or anything who's who's not from the U.S., um, the well, in in the United States, anything. Basically, anything produced by the federal government is uh, is in the public domain and so is freely shareable on Wikipedia. But that's not generally true of state governments or local governments. So, um, this is a the Oregon branch of the Federal Bureau of Land Management, and so all of the photos that they take would be um, would be in the public domain. But because it's the Oregon branch, it's uh, it's a nice uh, you know a nice subset of that for uh, people working on articles related to Oregon. So I'm going to just scroll through and see if I can find one that's uh, sort of an obvious, um, some, something I can easily work on. Uh, I've worked on a few of these last night. So um, okay, so here's I'm going to just click into this one, Christmas Valley Sand Dunes, and I'll show you sort of the. Um, the most manual way to go about this, and there are ways to uh, to to make it a little to to do this sort of thing a little more efficiently. Um, but let's just start with kind of a basic approach. So here's here's the photo. Looks like it's a dune buggy on it. I thought it was just a sand dune. So um, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you see there are a number of categories already there. That these are generally um, just picked up when he when he did this import, he pulled it in from Flickr, and it just copied the tags that have been entered on Flickr. So in a lot of cases, they're not really um, they're not really all that applicable. There's nothing in this one. I don't see anything that's really well. Actually, forests doesn't look uh, that looks like a pretty strange one. So uh, I'm gonna just I have the <clears throat> the hot cat feature turned on, which I've, I've maybe shown you uh, before. It's in the it's in the preferences, um, and this is a, a feature that gives you the little plus and minus symbols on categories. So I'm going to just show you where that is really quick. Um, so it's in preferences under gadgets, and you see here it's it's a uh, hot cat. So you want to check that off if it's not checked, and then go to the bottom and click save. And then, so as we're looking at the file, so I'm going to remove forests. So I'll just click the minus button, and I, I don't think. And, and you can see now if you go to the bottom that forest is gone. Um, and I think there might be reason to remove some of these others as well, um, but I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to really be too picky in this pass. I mean, but for instance, like sky um, or sand, uh, there are so many photos of sky and sand that you know you might not. It, unless this is really uh, is sort of an archetypal photo of one of those things, you might not want to put it in that category. It might not be something that this photo is primarily useful for, for illustrating. But we, we don't need to really get into that. But what I do want to do is add, um, so I just started 
typing in dune buggies. I wasn't sure that that would be uh, the exact name of the category. And you see it actually autofills. And we have the singular and the plural, dune buggies and dune buggy. Oh, hi, Jade. I just saw you came in. And hi, Sarah. Um, so I don't really know which is the right one. I'm going to do dune buggies. And I will hit OK. And now that we're there, uh, I think, or now that we've added that, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and just click into that category. And I see other pictures of dune buggies, so I think that's probably the right one. Um, and so now that I have done a little bit of work here on categorizing this, categorizing this particular file, I'm also going to remove this one, the very last category that he has here. You see how it says hidden categories. On commons, there are these, uh, these categories that don't uh, they don't show up as prominently. I think they only show up if you're logged in. I think that's what makes them hidden. Um, and so these are kind of for for uh, managing and and sorting and categorizing. Uh, so I'm going to remove the one that says files uploaded by Rasavia cleanup because this one basically has been cleaned up. We've cleaned up the categories that it's in. Uh, and I'm going to click save here. Sometimes you have to click the save button. Uh, when you're using the Hotcat tool. This actually doesn't seem to be taking it all. I'm going to just re refresh the page because that doesn't seem to be taking. And we'll just try again. So um, Rosemary, the, the thing that kind of set me off on this direction is, is thinking that if you're if you're interested in um, large collections of files, things that maybe would be uploaded by a museum or available from a museum. Uh, this might be the sort of thing that would be worthwhile for your students to do to kind of get a feel for how to work on, on the wiki and do something productive in the process. Um, and if you ever wanted to, to kind of delve into that in a little more detail and maybe design an assignment, I'd be happy to talk about that. Thanks very much. That I, I will explore that. Okay. So, oh, welcome, Orange Abundance. I see you just came in as well. Um, so, I'm curious if anyone else has articles they've been looking at or thinking about to catch us up on. Jade, I know I've I've seen you making some edits in the last week or so. So if you wanted to tell us about that, that would be great. Totally confused. Oh, no. <laughs> well, let's see if we can do something about that. OK. Yeah, so we have this in, in the open educational resources realm. We definitely have a lot of, uh, there's, there are a lot of times when sort of confusion around terminology comes up and terms that are used in similar ways or used to mean, mean different things. It seems like you've come across one here. So I'm going to pull up the article that you've been working on. Okay. Well, research is. Hey, you know, I can I can talk a little about this. This is Sarah. Great. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little late. I can I can talk about this stuff a little if you like because this is my sort of my area of research. Um, and do you want me to just sort of tell you my thoughts on this real quick? The terminology issue. Yes, please. <laughs> Someone can hear me. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is true. Open learning is shorthand for open and distance learning. And then th there's also you also you get into another, there are several terminology issues here because some people when they say open education they can mean stuff like the open university. You know the idea that there should be no pre prerequisites and the distance learning should be sort of a you know a liberating force, or it could be open learning as in free open educational resources 
So it's it's definitely a complicated uh, area in terms of terminology. And that, that's definitely something that I'm happy to help you sort through. You shouldn't have to do too much like independent research, hopefully, that is making your head spin and to the, to the extent where it's interfering with your Wikipedia editor. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to post some questions on the talk page or if you just want to throw out more questions, if there's anything I can do to help there, I'd be happy to. And, you know, Pete might have a more Wikipedia-specific um, response than that. But those are my thoughts there. That's great. Um, I think the, um, you know, the thing that to me seems like the main question around this article and what um, what Jade identified to begin with, and I know, I know we've, we've already talked about this, but just to, to recap, is just sort of the question of what is what is even the topic of this article? Is it a, um, you know, is it named specifically for a program area of UNESCO? Is it a topic that is, um, you know, has currency outside of UNESCO and does that sort of belong uh, in, as its own Wikipedia article or would it make more sense to merge it into something else? So um, I'm, I'm guessing that you are still a little ambivalent about all of that, Jade. Uh, we have had a little bit of discussion on the talk page uh, where uh, we, we looked at the, the history of the article and if you go through and, and look at the um, the contributions of it, it looks like there are a number of people who have contributed to the article, but if you look at them specifically, you pretty much find that this one user worldwide grid um, did almost all of the building of the article and what everyone else has done has been just sort of tidying up around the edges and um, this person hasn't been, this, it was written in two thousand eight and he or she has not done anything else since. Uh, I think 2009 is the most recent edit. So, uh, and also Jade noted that um, that he or she didn't enter their um, their email address, so it's not possible to send an email through the software. Uh, I know she left a note on their talk page, but if they're not logging into Wikipedia, they might never see that, or it might be a long time. So, um, so I guess the you know, in short, that means there's there's not really even an easy way to get an answer of what the original intent was with this article. I do think that this is a good um, illustration of why Wikipedia's notability policies are are important and why they, um, you know, why standards have evolved for what there should be articles about and and what there shouldn't, um, because they sort of help avoid situations like this where it's just not where, where someone puts something in and it's not it's not clear how um, how it fits in with everything else. Okay, so yeah, I, I, that's interesting that it seems to be associated with the Commonwealth of Learning. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm wondering if we should if we should dive into this in a little more depth. We do have still have 40 minutes left here, so we could. Well, probably I I think this raises an interesting question. If it is if it is true that it's mostly a commonwealth uh, that that, a common, that it's mostly a commonwealth of learning and affiliated institutions term, and no one else is using the term, then how does she approach it? Like, if you, how do you abstract that to Wikipedia in general? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, I, w I would think if that's the case, that it probably belongs more as a uh, as a section or a topic within other articles than as its own article. Um, I mean, that's that's one of the one of the core elements of notability is that the topic has been covered by independent, reliable sources, and if it's if it's basically all coming from the Commonwealth of Learning and their affiliated organizations, then you don't have that independence. And I mean, I think it, it also might be that that's more useful to Wikipedia readers too. Um, I'm curious to see what the readership of this article has been. So this shows us 
in the last and uh, this is actually interesting. So here's 90 days and we see a whole lot of views recently. But I, I suspect that looks like about the same amount of time that Jade has been working on the article. <laughs> so I think this may be reflecting the interest that we've had with it in this class. Um, Jade and, and myself and you know anyone who's been going to look at her talk page, page messages and her edits. Um, so if we disregard that recent spike, uh, the the most views that we had recently was in July, and that was 13 views in one day. So it's really not getting a lot of readership. And if the goal is to make information about this topic broadly available, it actually might that that purpose might be better served by putting information into an article that is being read more rather than having a separate article. And it's a short article, so it's there's probably no need to remove any information that's in here uh, to roll it into something else. Okay, so I'm going to pull up Open Education. Huge, the future section. That's kind of a an unusual section heading for an article, and it I hadn't noticed this before. Um, this looks like this looks like a section that could probably use a lot of work. So I'm, I don't know, let's not get too distracted into that right now. But um, this is definitely an article overall that could probably use a bit of of organizing, which makes it a little, that sort of adds to the challenge of figuring out how to best weave something else in. But at the same time, it's uh, if the article is kind of disorganized to begin with, and we put it in and it's not, you know, the perfect heading or something like that, we're not really introducing a problem that wasn't already there. So what do you think, Jade? Do you think it would make sense to to just start a section here on open learning for development? Okay. Okay. So can you so it's the development part that's the problem. So what's, could you describe what you see as the problem? Hi there. Um, so yeah, with development, well, let's see, open learning for development. The problem with using for development is because basically we're talking about intergovernmental or at least international and global levels. Um, and so development is broad, you know, if you just think in, just thinking in terms of the United Nations. Well, the thing is, is um, now the trend is rather than talking about simply development, it's about sustainable development. So if we look at this as a term for open learning for development, then does that mean there'll be a separate term for open learning for sustainable development? So that's that's what I'm looking at. And then if, if I look at the definition um, or the article on development in Wikipedia, that doesn't quite deal with the entire scope of things. Um, the only place where I can find where we're talk where there's any any sense of the scope of development is within the Commonwealth of Nation I mean Commonwealth of Learning um, in their website. But you know it's kind of you know they they define they define their project and put it under development. So it's like their definition there are what aspects of development that they're working on, but it may be that it doesn't necessarily apply universally. Okay, so it sounds to me like maybe the 
the appropriate subheading under open education or something like that might be might be something more like uh, international efforts to further open education or something along those lines that um, that development itself is is a bit of a loaded word and that we might want something a little bit more general or abstract and then put it into a section like that. Do you think that you could start a section like that, Jade? Even even without moving this entire one over, if that seems like too big a step for right now, uh, it might be that uh, that just you know I don't I don't see a section that seems to play that role in the current structure. I don't you know we'd probably want to read through this the future section, but uh, as you can see, there aren't a whole lot of references. There's a lot of text without a lot of footnotes. Um, so I kind of I, I'm I'm a little bit skeptical about this section. I, I it, it looks to me like like something that possibly has just been copied and pasted and then slightly adapted to Wikipedia. Um. Yeah, that's my that's my sense as well. It's kind of like somebody's rant <laughs> about <laughs> open education. Um. <laughs> Well, do you think that you could maybe take a, take a look at that and you know maybe trim it a bit or or um, or come up with a better section title or or something like that? I mean, I don't want to distract you. If you really want to focus on the the development article, I don't want to distract you away from that. But this seems like something that's at least somewhat related to that. And I guess one of the reasons I'm I'm drawn to this is just to to look at the um, we just saw that the open Learning for Development article was getting maybe 10 page views a day, and if we look at open education, I'd imagine we're going to see a lot more than that. So this is 2,000 times in the last 30 days, and we're seeing close to 100 edits per day, or um, views per day. Okay. That would be fantastic. So I'm going to, I'm, I already have that article on my watch list, but I will make sure to watch it closely in the next few days. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully we can make a little progress on that. Uh, I'm, as long as we're here, why don't we take a look at the, the history and the talk page and just see. So Phil Barker, this is a familiar name. This is someone that we've run into. So he's edited just a couple times. Uh, looks like pretty small edits in August. And Lane, who was just with us in our last session, edited in June. But it doesn't look like there's anything very active going on in editing this article. And just to jump over to the talk page. So there's this ancient discussion about whether to merge with open educational resources, which I think there's a pretty strong consensus not to do. Although there there is maybe a bit of a need still to clearly draw out what the distinction is between open education and OER. Um, and if we go down to the bottom, uh, so Christine Bush, who's a former student of ours, uh, looks like made the most recent comment. So I really think Jade that this is a, a great opportunity to uh, to jump in and, and work on an article that probably a lot of people have been hanging back from from working on. So great. All right. So, um, if if anyone else has comments or questions, I am very glad to take them. I also have an idea of something that could sort of be a, a step on this road that I could walk us through. So, you know, just turn off my mic and breathe for a moment and see if any questions come out. And uh, you know, I'll be I'll be back in about thirty seconds. So maybe I can talk, but I don't know what else to talk about. So yeah, when it comes to this 
story of, of um, open education, I can give a lot of assistance, I think, or guidance. Um, it is one of our goals in leading this course that we, w we would like to see activity in this article space, but of course people should work on whatever is of interest to them. So if there are people working on other topics that want to throw out questions, they shouldn't feel at all daunted or reluctant. And, you know, the tiniest questions are totally appropriate. Often people ask very basic questions and I'm glad. I'm like, oh, wow, I've always kind of wondered that too. So I could probably throw out questions. Okay, I'm back. And uh, yeah, Sarah, that's glad to have questions from you too. Okay, well, first of all, can you go back to the article page? Moving for the top to render. Now, why is yours red? You've, you've cast, you're you're seeing something different from what I see. Right. So I'm. So typically, I log in with my demo account. Um, in this case, I log in with my regular account because I was showing uh, Rosemary something on Commons. And so this is a. It's a preference I have, which um, color codes the title of the article based on its quality rating. So uh, it's kind of a nice preference to turn on. Uh, and why is why on earth is this? T it, uh, so what I noticed was first that it was red, and second that it said it was a subclass article. How on earth is this a subclass article? Uh, this is a subclass article, I think, simply because nobody has bothered to come back and re-rate it since it's been built up, which is not that uncommon. Maybe so it's like a gigantic, well-formed, well. -formed, well I guess it's kind of sprawling, but there's a lot of info here and a lot of people have worked on it. I'm just, I always think of right. stubs as short. <laughs> yep. Short and uh, and usually very, very few references. So we, we actually have, this is actually kind of a small number of references for an article this long. Um, I would, you know, my, I, I would be very confident in just changing this to start class and we could just do that right now. So why don't we, why don't we start off by doing that? Um, I I would guess that Can anyone after, I would want to give it a class? closer. I'm sorry. Can anyone change it to start class? Yes. So um, so I've just gone to the talk page, and uh, so it's it's rated within the Wiki Project Open Access project. So you see that it has stub listed here. So that's the thing that's that's doing that color coding. Uh, and if we just edit this section. Um, you'll see this bit of code it says Wiki Project Open Access class equals stub. So I'm going to just change that to class equals start. And this has to be it has to be one of the established classes. If I put in um, if I put in if I misspell it uh, here, I'll just do a preview, and you'll see it. It just won't. It has question marks where the quality rating would be. So um, so you do have to know what those names are, but they're pretty straightforward. It's just stub start. C, B, uh, G, A for good article, or F, A for a featured article. Um, and I am going to say re create as start class. If it was listed by several different wiki projects, we would want to do that within the code for each wiki project. So now I'm going to go back to the article. Uh, and sometimes this doesn't update right away, so it's still showing that it's subclass here, but if I come back in an hour, it will probably update. And I'm the one who interrupted this, but if we do want articles to identify themselves by rating, where do we do that in our preferences? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so I may have to look a little bit. I think that's also under gadgets. Um, let's see. There we go. So it's under appearance, and it's display and assessment of an article's quality as part of the page header. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think this is also if if uh, if any of you find yourself poking through the the preferences and um, find something that's interesting or useful, please leave a note on our class talk page. Um, it's you know we we welcome ideas as well as questions there, and and a lot of the time I think you guys will will know what are the interesting and useful. Uh, preferences and features that you, you'll find things as you're working on Wikipedia and I'd love to see you sharing them more with each other uh, instead of just me pointing them out. There are lots and lots of them here that I don't even know about. I, the, the way that I've learned about them is just by kind of clicking and trying them out and there are always new things being added. Let's, I, I would like to, oh, well actually Sarah, you said something in the chat window that I'd I'd like to hear more about. Um, I think this this concept of open educational practices being an important link between open education and OER is a is a good concept. And I wonder if you have some suggestions about how to um, how to weave that into the articles. I, I and just to for for anyone that's not aware, open educational practices is um, this is an article that. Uh, a couple of our students in the last round worked extensively on. It was a pretty short stub uh, and they really built it out pretty extensively. So we have, I think, a, a good, if we if we link the phrase open educational practices, it's now actually going to be useful <laughs> where it might not have been all that useful uh, three or four months ago. Yeah, well, this, I think I just created, like, this sentence that I just wrote. I just made it up, but it sounds about right, doesn't it? Open educational. Open, open education, education is in general. general. Go ahead. Yeah, the two sentences. Open education is a general concept, and open educational resource is one instance of a learning material. And the missing link is an open educational practice where OER are used in open education. That sounds about accurate to me. I have no idea whether the Wikipedia articles reflect what I just said. And now, yeah, and I agree, well, now that the, some people just say OEP, now that the OEP article has been fleshed out, it would be very appropriate to link it all together in some, in some way. I think the second sentence, um, I'm still, I'm, I'm not entirely sure of because it seems to me that it's possible to use OER in a way that is not an open practice at all. Um, you know, if, if you're teaching a, a traditional math course and you have your students watch videos from the Khan Academy, uh, they're definitely using open educational resources, but if they aren't, if they aren't, you know, commenting on those videos online or, you know, doing something interactive, to me that doesn't seem like something I would consider an open educational practice per se. You, the, the practices might still be very traditional and focused within the classroom. I think it's, I don't know, what do, what do you think of that? I have to admit that I got distracted in the middle of that, but EJ is following. And she says open learning isn't necessarily linked with an educational institution. That's true. Well, and see, open learning is, of course, if it does have its own article, you'd, al you'd almost think it should be the open education article. But this is it's a little bit weird because it's all such a new field. It's almost like we're defining the reality of it through Wikipedia right now so, in real time. So I, um, I I want to come back to, I know I've, I've brought this up before, but um, one of the, I think, better sources that I've found is this, uh, is Neil Butcher's book on OER that does, it talks about these concepts in very basic terms. Um, and I think this might be something that would help us to, you know, to not have to, to sort of make it up, to be able to, to cite something that's been published. Um, 
because it's I mean it's in this frequently asked questions format and it has a lot of these sections are is OER the same thing as e-learning is OER the same thing as open learning open education so if we um, if we go to these sections it could be that this you know some of this language is something that really helps inform how we you know put the, use the kind of introductory language we would use on both or several of these articles, OER, open learning, open education. Um, and I wonder if we could maybe just do a small improvement right now. Maybe we can kind of take a moment and read through this and, and think about how to put it in an article. Why don't we, why don't we do that? Let's take, uh, let's take about two minutes or so and read and think through this section, and then we can talk about if it fits somewhere. So yeah, uh, I see Sarah, the the, uh, the author's opinions show through. I think that's true. Um, do you do you think that to a point that it's not very useful, or um, I mean, this is much more your field than mine, so. Uh, I think it's very useful in that it can be folded into one of those Wikipedia paragraphs about how open, how, how a term can mean this in some cases and then this in some other cases. I think probably most Americans don't relate to a lot of this, this bulleted list as having a place in the discussion of OER, per se. I don't know. I well, but the, I mean, like it's open learning means different things to different people, and I don't think everyone agrees with these bullets. I got gotcha. you. I mean, it seems to me that the concept of open education and and maybe open learning is is not something that has been discussed using those terms as much in the U.S. Um, as elsewhere. So I guess I would I would wonder whether people in the U.S. would even have a, a strong opinion about what concepts constitute open learning. We gotta get him in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I actually did invite Neil to uh, to join us for one of our sessions in the last class, the last round of the course, and he was very interested, but wasn't available. And uh, so it's it would be good to um, to revisit that. It would be good to find other definitions than this one and. Get, get more citations. And by the way, I'm pretty shocked that, I don't know if you saw, there's also an open learning article, which is really yes, I did. Yeah. short and lame and has nothing to do with the open education article. We, we really should uh -huh. get someone looking at this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is on our content list, uh, and it should be for Communicate OER. Um, if you, are you able to just add that, Sarah? Or, or someone. Seems like this would be a good one to, to come back to. Yeah, I'll go stick that on there. Great. Um, so I guess just to... Is there a separate to... distance learning article? Probably there is. Yeah, I don't see it listed here, but I'll bet there is. Yep. There sure is distance education, and this one is pretty extensive, isn't it? Yeah, and that makes sense because open education yeah. is just open. Is, education can be a form of distance education, but distance education is is a separate topic. Right. Okay. So. 
just to come back to Neil Butcher's book for a moment, the, the thing that jumps out the most to me is this last sentence, which it's not saying a whole lot, but it just just that um, that OER is something that that might be useful within the con within the topic of uh, of open learning or open education, but is not a necessary component. Um, this this seems like this seems like something that could really be useful in describing how these things fit together in the OER article. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go back to the OER article. Um, and and actually, even just sort of the nature of how he has split this up, like the sections that he has, is OER the same as open learning, open education? Uh, you know, sort of sections that are titled in a way that that compare and contrast them to related concepts. I think is a useful structure for a nebulous topic like this. So if we look through the the sections in the table of contents here. We don't have a section that's anything like that, so it might be it might be worthwhile considering, you know, maybe just putting in a section here called related concepts um, that that kind of puts that that places OER in the in the context of other openness and education topics, and you know, not just as a list. Like I mean, we have our see also list, and you know, there's there's certainly lots of information about this, but but something that has a few sentences about how does it relate to something like open education um, and using something like this as a citation. Do you guys agree? Does that seem like a like a worthwhile expansion to this article? I I do, certainly. Just Pete, Pete and I are, uh, it's a little awkward for us to edit this particular article ourselves because we, we, because we've probably disclosed we do quote unquote paid work in relation to Wikipedia. So we have to be careful which articles we edit. <laughs> I don't know if I summed that up in a, in an accurate yeah. way, Pete, but. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think there's that. And then, I mean, for me also, there is, uh, you know, I'm, I know enough about open educational resources to know that there's a lot I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, I, it's not that I'm unwilling to make edits like this, but I really, you know, when I ask if it makes sense to you guys, I really mean it because I kind of want to have some assurance that I'm not the only person that, you know, that sees the use in something like this before I do it. So what would you then advise one of your students who's, who said that to you? Uh, I would say, uh, you know, probably just go and start a section in the article. Um, I, I think that here, let's. I'm, I'm going to just leave a note on the talk page right now. Um, so either, you know, either starting on the talk page or on the article itself is is fine. Um, I'm going to do the talk page because I'm less worried about. Um, you know, one one nice thing about putting it on the talk page is you don't really have to worry about phrasing it exactly the right way and formatting your references and things like that. So if you just have an idea that you want to kind of park and get back to it, um, the talk page can be a good option for that. Um, and I'm actually, this is sort of a weird way that I, um, I guess the, what I've shown you guys to do is to click the new section um, button to create a new comment on the talk page, which is fine. I, there didn't used to be, I, I've just always kind of gone to the most recent comment and I'll just manually put in a new section. There's no, no great reason for doing it this way, but that's, that's why what I'm doing might not look familiar. Um,
I'm going to put a link to this page. There's my comment and save that. So yes, Jade, we've got comments from you here that I uh, I don't remember if I've seen these ones before. I don't think I noticed this when you posted it. So I, I mean, just as a as a my my understanding of open educational resources is maybe on the more liberal end of it. I I would think of anything that can be used for the purpose of education uh, and is freely licensed. I, I would consider an open educational resource. Uh, so you know the the question of whether it's produced by a formal educational institution. To me, is not uh, is not necessary. I don't know if there are people who would disagree with that, but that's that's my take on it anyway. So, oh, I see. I my link is broken. Why? Oh, I see. I've got an extra couple spaces in there from my paste. Hmm. Okay. So that could be. Yeah. So uh, so adding that to the World Bank article might be worthwhile too. Yeah. Usually, uh, open educational resource doesn't doesn't matter if it's tied to any particular institution. Sorry, I was having trouble with my microphone. It's just a freestanding entity. It, I mean, like, that's kind of the point that any institution right. can use it. It's open and freely available. We have a side discussion going here about where, if EJD were to start working on a matrix, separating out all these terms and how they relate to each other, where she would work on it and where it would reside. And she was saying about maybe creating something and uploading it to, to uh, Wikimedia Commons, yep. then we could all look at it. Absolutely. I, I'm curious about yep. if, there, if, if there were actually like some kind, if we were you know, or she were to produce sort of like a linked table, which sounds like the kind of thing Therese, ter, 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 yes. I can't pronounce her name, Therese might Therese. be interested in. Therese. Um, uh, where would it live ultimately on Wikipedia? Well, um, I think I think uploading something to Wikimedia Commons is probably the the best. You know, if you want if you want to do a graphical representation, that's definitely the way to do it. Um, there's there's going to be a bit of a question, like if in order to include it in a Wikipedia article, um, it's the the no original research policy is going to come into play. So if if the graphic is pretty clearly a representation of of established uh, knowledge in the field uh, that relates to to good reference materials and things like that, then I don't think there would be a problem. Um, but if it's if it's kind of more of a subjective take on how these things fit together, um, it it might not really be appropriate to put into a Wikipedia article. Um, but Commons uh, as a in, in, in general, Commons is is much more accepting. Of, Commons doesn't have a no original research policy, so you can, you know, you can be a lot more free uh, in the kinds of things that you upload there. Um, even if it's just intended to support discussion on Wikipedia, you can upload it to Commons, and then you can pull it in on the talk page um, and say, hey, you know, the, the, here's my understanding of how these things fit together. What do other people think? How should we 
work this into the text of articles. Um, and if you do that, I think, uh, so this just kind of looping back to what we were discussing at the beginning of the hour, um, be sure to put it into the open educational resources category on comments. So when you, so you would upload your file, and I'm going to just click random file here. So, you know, suppose this is the um, the chart that Jade has made connecting these various concepts. So you would want to go down to the bottom and click plus and put in open educational resources. And that way we would all, you know, be more likely to find it. Uh, and also, and, and other people following this topic who aren't necessarily associated with our class might, might find it as well. So. Um, and then, I, so Jade, I think you've been working with Therese a little bit on her, uh, her chart of repositories, yes? So I know uh, it's been a little bit. Oh, it's, I'm, I was thinking of Sarah. So maybe you haven't. So, um, so Jade, this this is um, this is probably a page you should look at a little bit, and you might want to send Therese a message on her user talk page, or send her an email or something, um, because this this is very closely related to what she's trying to do here. She's she's working towards um, a list of open educational resources repositories, um, and this is something that might be its own separate article or she might be weaving into the OER article. She's wrestling with that a bit uh, currently, so uh, I'm sure she would love to have further input on that. So it looks like we've come to the end of the hour. Uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? Yes, that's right. I hope that uh, people without explicit interest in OER don't find this too difficult a discussion to tolerate. But for me, it's fascinating in, I guess, for several reasons, one of which is seeing how ideas get organized on Wikipedia is exciting for me. Um, because so many people will then come back to this as the authoritative resource. It's like, oh, well, actually, it's just something some people hatched. And then, you know, and we just invite as much peer review as possible. And this is exciting, right? Yeah. I think it really shines a light on one of the more interesting things about Wikipedia, which is that these there there are topics that are not really all that well suited to Wikipedia as far there's so many open questions in them. So um, you know for for someone to write a book about open educational resources, not necessarily that hard because there would be some expectation that your your opinion and your take on it would be informing how you write about it. But to write something that's that's truly intended to be neutral in an area where there are so many open questions about definitions and how concepts relate to each other and uh, and things are always changing. It's it's just fundamentally difficult to write a Wikipedia article like that. And so, uh, you know, I think where where and and just by contrast, I think something like um, you know a sports team is. Pretty easy to write an article about. I mean, you have you have a pretty broad consensus about, you know, uh, what what seasons were the, were they the most successful and who their most notable players are and things like that. It's not really that hard to make a lot of those judgment calls. But within something like Open Educational Resources, it's a lot more nebulous. So it's it's very important to have something there that helps people kind of structure their understanding of it, because so many people will go to Wikipedia. But at the same time, it really is a difficult project. And uh, I think 
Jade, the, the kinds of questions that you're bringing up here, I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that you're bringing them up because I think really everyone that we've interacted with on this project has had those kinds of questions as they look, looked at the articles on Wikipedia. And, you know, until we start to talk through them and see what sort of consensus emerges from our conversations, it can be really hard to get started. So I'm, I, I really appreciate your bringing these, these thoughts and questions to the class. I think it's, uh, it, it brings a lot of value. Anyway, I think that's probably a good note to close on. Uh, I hope you guys will jump in and, uh, and make some edits on Wikipedia before our last class uh, on Tuesday. Um, and we'll be a little bit more free uh, in, our, in our last class. We actually may, uh, I haven't brought this up with Sarah yet, so I'm, I'm not sure um, whether we'll do it or not, but we, we actually have a potential guest who wanted to join us last week and wasn't able to, so we, we might have, um, have another Wikipedian join us on Tuesday. Um, anyway, I look forward to seeing you then, and uh, happy editing in the meantime. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. See you next week.